Hello, everybody. I'm very excited to be uh, interviewing Jamie Dornan, great actor Jamie Dornan, and that's true, uh, who also happens, luckily, to be a friend of mine, luckily for me. Anyway, Jamie, I'm really glad to talk to you about this beautiful film, Belfast, that you made with Ken Brenner. Um We watched it the other night, I watched it the other night, and was very moved by it, and very moved certainly by your performance. All the performances are, are really beautiful. Um, so let me ask you the, 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 the question that you always get asked first in things like this, which is, uh, how did this come about? for you um firstly thanks stan for doing this this is very kind of you amy please uh, please to, uh use up some of your time on me i appreciate it um i will uh i will do the same for you whenever you ask <laughs> never, never ask um Thank you. you have much more impressive friends than me to ask. <laughs> <laughs> i don't know about that um yeah it came about um at a very strange time for all of us because it was the beginning it was sort of in the midst of our first lockdown uh during covid where everyone in and you know in so many industries but you know if I'm speaking for our industry and entertainment and movies and tv and theater nobody knew what was happening it was very unsettling you know, the theaters are all closed, cinemas are closed, no productions were happening. I'd pulled out of a job three days before we started shooting. So I was feeling very like um, uh, unsettled about what was going to happen next, like everyone was. And then out of nowhere, got a text message. I always think the best news or the or the most exciting things in my career come via text from my agent than rather than like, <laughs> there's always like a a, like a preemptive, like prompt text saying from Theresa Peters, my, my agent who I adore, saying like, um, I'll take, we need to talk, I'll call you if I'm out. Ooh, <laughs> like, <laughs> something is stirring and it's good. Um, right. I got a text from Theresa saying, Kenneth Branagh is making a movie um, called Belfast and uh, he wants you to be in it and he'd love you to read the script and chat to him as soon as you can. And I, I, I read the script that day and spoke to Ken the next day and you know it was a you know just a very quick and easy yes for me you know um, and we were the first we were the first uh production to shoot in the UK during COVID so we were it was still unknown times and uh, this was before vaccine was talked about or, um I was very uncertain in terms of how we would do that, what the process, what that process would be of, of like that. But um, you know, we got we we got through it and actually ended up being more of a bonding experience than I expected, considering everyone's wearing masks and keeping separated. And, you know. Yeah, that's that's really interesting. That's inc it's incredibly hard to believe that you know that that was happening at the at at that time. That yeah, that's that's really because I've shot a number of things now during COVID, as have you, and it's. It's not an easy thing for anyone. I think particularly for the crews because the crews are the ones who have to wear masks all the time while they're doing physical labor. And that's yeah. And I was wondering brutal. the most efficient set I've ever been on, and like I, I, so much of it had to be efficient. You know, you're only allowed each department were on allowed a run at the set, sort of separately from each other department. You know, so it's like okay you go in do your thing right you're done Our department go in so it had to be sort of very regimented in how we did it um but i do have a feeling i don't know i hope i get to learn i hope i get to do another movie with ken outside of covid but i have a feeling that he likes his sets to be like really organized anyway he's very much about preparation and organization and um, you know i was constantly asking him uh questions about how he sets up his day um uh so it was um it, it always felt like we were in total control even though the world was sort of insane around us right yeah he he has an ability i mean his films are always very well um very well structured and certainly this one is incredibly uh well composed it's, it's absolutely good. his composition is always good but this is this is really extraordinary and 
but also he's, he loves actors so much and he loves acting so much and he's able to pull together uh, ensembles like nobody else I, I know. Um, so how, let me ask you about that, just so you have all these incredible actors you're working with, Kieran and Judy, and I use their first names because I know them, but you know, uh, I mean, this is an extraordinary group of people. What a wonderful group of people to be with, um, especially when you're making something during COVID, but also something on uh, such a dark subject. How was it? It was light, weirdly, you know, um, felt light. Um, that group of people um, from Judy Dance to Kira Hines to Katrina Balfe to the, the, the boys, you know, Jude Hill, who's was incredible yeah, they were all you're very grateful when you turn up the set and all the other actors have a similar vibe you know everyone, ev i'm each to their own and everyone has their own way of getting to where they need to get and i'm respectful of everyone's process but we all had a very similar approach to it which was basically seemingly try to keep as relaxed as you possibly can right up you're you're in it um and everyone's like that and i i think if you're seeing the likes of judy dance being like that you sort of think oh it's okay <laughs> like <laughs> yeah yeah no, that's an yeah, okay that's true i have i i have found that a lot of the a lot of times when you're doing a very dark story those sometimes are the lightest totally. sets of all. And I, I actually experienced that with Ken when we did something together many years ago. It was a very dark thing, but the mood in the room was Weird. was always, uh, you know, sort of very light because you have to do that to sort of counterbalance the... Yeah. Yeah, I totally agree. I find you, you need the levity uh, in those moments when you're, you know, between... You know, action and cut when you're all very down here, you need to prayer and make each other laugh. And that was that was definitely the mood on set, you know, and, and you know, Ken sets the tone for all of it, you know, and Ken Ken's funny, you know, and he and he and he's up for a laugh, you know, he's um yes, he's he's meticulous in his planning and we get stuff done and um you know, we've all put the work in hopefully to, before we turn up on set that when we do turn up on set we're, we're there to have fun and i think ken's exactly the same and it was it was fun it was also yes it was during COVID, and it was, there was that added certain difficulties to the whole experience but it was unseasonably hot weather it wasn't it, it, it wasn't unseasonably it was summer it was meant to be hot but we're talking about the uk and it was yeah but it's yeah but it's yeah <laughs> you know what it's yeah. like so <laughs> long long sunny days and yeah. um everyone together making this uh making this thing that we all really cared about and it was really personal obviously so personal to ken it's you know yeah you know, very it's a story but so him. yeah so tell me about that so um you're obviously irish as far as i can tell from that accent but um so tell me about tell me t tell me what it was like talking to ken about you know, sort of bringing this story to life that obviously has been, you know, sort of gestating for a very long time in him. And, but also about your, your own experience uh, in Northern Ireland growing up. Yeah, you know what, it's mad because I think so many people, Stan, don't realize that Kenneth Branagh is from Belfast. You know, like it's very, you know, we do, if you're from Belfast, you know that Ken Branagh is from Belfast because they don't care, he could have left he left when he was nine. He could have left when he was nine minutes old and would be claiming him back home, you know. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll take it. I mean, we're talking about a place, um, most of our tourism is based around the fact that we built the Titanic. Um, nobody stopped to sort of, you know, consider what happened to the Titanic and, and yeah. maybe <laughs> it wasn't me. So it's your fault. Me. Yes, right, yeah. Absolutely, listen, I'm here to take a break. <laughs> but, I, yeah, we're all very aware at home that he's from there. Um, I've often felt that he probably had a story to tell from home, you know, because I had a little bit of an awareness of the timings of when he left. I knew he was there till uh, he was nine or 10 and and, um, it was, and I knew it was at the beginning of the conflict. So I always felt that I wonder one day, will Kent Branagh tell a story about Belfast? And then it's that pure luck thing of, 
right age, right time, right whatever. And I, you know, I, I'm, I was able to be involved in it. But, you know, I would say we had, um, he's still like a Belfast boy at heart. You know, I think no matter how, you know. How British he is. Shakespearean, yes. His, <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. You know, it's still, he's still very much rooted at home. But I, and I think there's something, a thread that is within people from that part of the world that, that you have, a, that there's a common thread and there's a resilience and there's a humor that comes with being from that part of the world that we, we can meet on, you know, and which is lovely, but also, you know, we did grow up in a, in a, in a different time and, uh, he, uh, nine years old, it was the beginning of conflict. I was born in 1982, 13 years into a 30 year conflict. Um, I came from a very middle class background. He was born into a working class um, area of North Belfast. So there's differences, but I think we are very much bonded on the sort of core um, aspects that make up people from that part of the world and, and made for- do you, do you remember, do you, do you remember the conflicts. Yeah, Jesus. Yeah. Your, I'm, saying, I'm saying that as someone who you know, I've, ne I've never hidden the fact that I, I come from a middle class background. But you know, my dad was a doctor. Um, but he he wasn't. Met, he he's from working class background. His my you know I, my history of in Belfast is working class, but I certainly had very privileged upbringing. But you're still there, and you're talking about a tiny place. There's only one point five people in the whole of Northern Ireland, um, school in Belfast, um, my whole life, uh, even if you aren't like on the sort of the hot spot areas of where most of the trouble was, um, and where, you know, the British army were patrolling streets with guns around, you know, working class areas, even if you're not in the midst of that, you're massively affected by what's going on. It's even stuff now that you, that I tell people that is, was so commonplace when I was growing up, like going to meet your mates on a Saturday afternoon um, after you played rugby or whatever it was, and you go, I'll meet you in town. And then um, there'd be a bomb scare. And that was honestly like, and so then the whole of the center of Belfast would be closed. And that made, that was honestly every couple of weeks. And how normal that was, you'd be like on the on the landline, obviously before mobile phones, on the landline going, oh, we, oh, there's a bit of bombs scare. All right, well, listen, sure, I'll see you on Monday at school. It's like the idea now having kids of them having a, a very trivial, you know, uh, uh, plan, like going to meet their friends uh, to go shopping or whatever, cancel because someone has called up and said they're planting a bomb. Like, what? You know what I mean? That, that, but that was normal and checking i remember at one point my dad because he, he was a doctor and um he was uh treating a patient who was connected let's say to one side of um of a sort of paramilitary organization and um there was difficulties with the pregnancy or something like that my dad was an obstetrician and i remember like for that whole period my dad having to check under the car for car bombs like before we before we'd go to drive us to school and that image i remember seeing all the time seeing people looking under the car in belfast like even that like seeing that i'm thinking that was normal now talking about it is lunacy yeah yeah that's incredible you see um did did ken's parents go back to um ireland or did they they stayed in it because i remember when i met him he had built he had this beautiful house that he had built and he was putting in an elevator because he, he always talked about his parents and he was very, he, could tell, he said i'm putting it in an elevator because my parents are older now and i want to make sure that they when they come and visit they can i just thought it was the sweetest thing ever it's not like he was living in a skyscraper it's just that it was just just to get from one floor to the to the other but i thought that was just the sweetest thing i'd ever heard Nice room on the 36th floor of his. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. To, my, yeah, to the best of my knowledge, they moved to like Reading and pretty much there. Um, not that far away because we couldn't get back to Belfast to shoot most of it because of COVID times. And we weren't able to take over streets and rehome people while we used their homes as a set because of COVID people weren't allowed to leave their homes and hotels were closed and everything. So we had to build this set in, in Berkshire in England to, to replicate Belfast. Oh, is that, oh, I see. 
So tell, tell me about it because the way it's shot is so beautiful. It's so beautifully composed, as I said, and the, um, uh, what I, what I love about it, yes, he does. You know, there's 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 coverage, but there's a lot of stuff that's shot really very simply, quote unquote, simply uh, in 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 Warner's in these gorgeous sort of master shots. Um, uh, how did did you talk to him about? Did he tell you he was going to shoot that way, or and that it was going to be black and white, and blah blah blah? And, and what was it like to work? Because that's I certainly love all that. I think, you know, that he talked about having a strong aesthetic for it. Um, I don't think there wasn't, the decision to keep it in black and white wasn't really final until later. You know, often when you watch the playback, it was in color. Um, and then and then they change it to black and white in the monitor and you go, oh God, I look 70% better. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. That's yeah. Um, but um, there's times, when a director is saying this plays in one, it's a big scene, it's a, maybe it's a five page scene, and there's lots of dialogue, there's lots of movement, um, there's three or four players involved in it. When they say it plays in one, I instantly just think, you know what you're doing, you're confident. Just, and then that confidence, unless it's like <laughs> someone who by that point, have, uh, you've seen enough of them to know that they really don't know what they're doing and they think it's like, it's just jazzy and clever to do it and try it in a winner, but the likes of Sir Kenneth Branagh. So um, there's a couple of times, you know, it just lends itself so much more and you're so much more embedded into the content of a scene if it plays in one. The best example I think that we had was when we have the scene at Christmas Day, the boys are at the forefront of the shot. They've fallen asleep uh, and they've got a uh, little Jude has like chocolate on his thing. And Katrina and I have a very big scene that moment saying about um, we're not in a great place here. And then uh, my character go, Pa goes to the back door and I say, I thank her for raising the kids because it was really all about her and I wasn't yes. there. Beautiful. Yeah. You know, that is the scene when I read the script that I really choked up at. I remember thinking, I can't wait to play that. And then, <laughs> so you know, on, on that morning, we did it. We did it in one. And Ken said, I'd love to play it in one, but he did not said that's all we're doing. Anyway, so we did it and I was like, God, I felt good about that. I actually felt good. And yeah, what will what, that change when I come in tight? Well, I don't know, you know, you know <laughs> thinking it through. It's like pretty much my biggest moment in the whole thing. And then Ken came up and said, listen, I um, I think it just plays better in a one. If that's okay, we're not gonna come in for, uh, for coverage. And you know what? I think at the time I had a little bit of like a sort of, you know, vanity moment of going like, oh, like, I wouldn't mind that. Like that's a huge, <laughs> that's a huge don't thing. Don't want to be here. Right? <laughs> um, you know, I don't know if you could tell Ken, but I'm actually tearing up. Can you tell? <laughs> I wouldn't. The tear didn't actually drop, but Jesus, my eyes were wet. <laughs> get in for that. Yeah, um, I was on the cusp. Yeah. I think I can do that again. Come in. <laughs> There's only one way to find out. Um, well, actually, you know what? I I love that scene and I love the way it plays out and the, the fact that we are talking about uh, the boys um, and we are talking about the difficulty of the time we're in I go to the door I thank her for raising the boys because it's really been about her and the whole time the boys are in shot no it's gorgeous it's beautifully composed and it's it's a beautiful moment and you're you're great you're all great in the scene but you you're particularly great in, in, in it um, um, because one of the things that I really love about uh, watching you is that you you're a really good listener uh, as an actor. A lot of actors don't listen. I've worked with them, and uh, they they don't listen. But you're you're listening, and 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 you you know you know when to you know when to pause, and and it makes it and that scene I think says that all very very clearly uh about how artful you are you are at that and and she is extraordinary as, as well ordinary and what was lovely about the, the everything i did with katrina um but that scene particularly but really every scene is we were often not often we were always on the exact same page about where we wanted to take it and we were really really fluid and malleable with each other and just like 
and it always felt like this flow. It's a struggle, isn't it? We can all attest to working with a scene partner sometimes when they just have a very strong plan of what they want to do and they don't care if you fit it. <laughs> yes, those are the ones who don't listen. That's the thing. And they have practiced and practiced and practiced their speech in the mirror loaded times and they feel great about it and they turn up and they are sticking to that and they're just doing it no matter what you're coming in with and it, it's awful and it's like the opposite of what the process should be you know and um i with katrina with everyone but you know most of myself to katrina we were always just like just connected i mean stay they connected with each other and, and responded accordingly and um yeah, Ken's been nice about that, saying that, um, you know, it's, you know, we've heard it a million times, but, you know, acting is reacting, it is listening, you know, that's so much of it. And, and actually so much of this story plays on um, people picking up on information and particularly through Buddy's eyes and the eyes of a nine-year-old boy, he's, he does so much listening and trying to interpret what's going on and what his parents are talking about and what does that mean for the future and... So we find a great listener in him, thankfully, to, you know, Ken. And then Ken's been yeah. saying. He, he's wonderful, that that boy. What what was it? What was it? It's not easy sometimes no. to act with kids. I have had not always great experiences with, yeah. with kids where you're just like, you got, there's nothing. And they're really not meant to be, you know, you're acting with a kid who really is not meant to be an actor in any way, shape or form. And then the parents are coming up to you going, do you think he's going to be, and you want to go like, oh my God, please just let him go play baseball or whatever. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. But this kid, this kid was, was great. And there was a really, really nice connection between the two of you. Yeah. Again, you know, a bit of luck there with, um, with Jude and his temperament and his, you know, and also he's from that part of the world. So there's an instant inbuilt, there's a banter, uh, with each other. There's a shorthand with each other that is just honestly within you if you're from that part of the world and he will uh we can be kind of brutal with each other in, in ireland in general our currency is to like take the mickey out of each other you know that's how we communicate um <laughs> he is brutal with me dude jesus actually his dad had to come and say to me um we were doing press like some early on press and uh his dad had been chaperoning him and Jude had given me a pretty hard time, like on camera for like a whole junket day. And then his dad came up and said, listen, Jamie, I told you to sort of lay off you a bit. And I was like, oh my God. I was like, I can handle it. You know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm a big boy. I can handle it, boy. Um, but he, he has this inbuilt sort of cheekiness, which is perfect for not only the part, but also I think you need a bit of that to sort of get through this weird, you know, job or whatever. But he was never, he was always up for it. You know, he never, he was never tired. He seemingly, he's got a great engine, as we say, you know, he just was always um, ready, super prepared, always knew his lines, but with, you know. They always do. They always, always know their lines. They always do. I hate that about children. <laughs> <laughs> but with Ken, Ken always had like a football on set, like a soccer ball on set. So we'd often like between takes would just be keeping it really loose and all around and you know feel like we are a, a family you know and i've had it the other way I've, i did a scene once with a boy who's playing my son and he was only five years old in all fairness you know having a five-year-old myself i i know how that can go and, and it, towards the end of the day whatever his maximum day was eight hour day or whatever he just lost it like totally totally lost it and i had to do the scene where i was like really close to him and i was sort of putting him to bed and i was sort of telling him all this like um sort of you know fatherly um you know wisdom and uh he cracked by this point he'd gone so i was just doing it to a, a teddy bear yeah <laughs> they're just about keeping the teddy bear's ear out of out of frame yeah, and I, right right oh it's so hard listen i we've all gotten to that point yes. you know where you yes you're just like you want to leave yeah yeah can i can i ask you just I'm curious for a number of reasons, um, but I just like, so you said, so you, you shot it, you, you shot in Belfast, but you shot some in Belfast, but some. That, yeah. So that opening sequence, which is modern day Belfast and all yeah. this 
miles of all that. That is that obviously that was shot in Belfast, but every other frame of the movie we shot in England. Wow, yeah. wow, a very authentic, brilliant set that we. This wasn't a big budget movie, you know. We didn't have a lot of time or money, um, right? Which is different for Ken, you know. Particularly in the last few years, he's done a lot of. Yeah, know, he's done a lot of big, big stuff. Yeah, yeah. And uh, how long? How long were the? Uh, how long was the shoot? We did. I think it was. I think it was twenty five shooting days. Um, we did two weeks, nearly two weeks of rehearsal, including like dance rehearsal and singing and. Um, we did a lovely thing. Ken did a lovely thing of taking all the grown ups the first day of rehearsal, all the grown ups. So, Kieran, Judy, myself, and Katrina, we all sat around a table with masks on. Judy Dance was wearing a big, a, a tiger mask that was like roaring. It was terrifying. It was the first time I'd ever met Judy Dance. <laughs> she walked in with this mask on, which just it, sums up everything about Judy and her character. Um, but we sat around and we all just, Ken just posed a lot of questions to us about family and about um, how we would react and had we been in situations like this before with our family and how did that make us feel? It's like therapy. And before we know it, we were all just really opening ourselves up to each other. And I think all, all, I certainly cried at one point, you know, uh, and it was just this, just broke down barriers and, and made us feel so much more at ease with each other than when we, when we it was very clever. Yeah, that's brilliant. And I know he, he likes to rehearse. I mean, because obviously he's, you know, uh, of the theater from the theater and, and rehearsal is a, is, is a really important thing for him. And it's evident in, in the film, you know, you, you, you see it. Um, I, I also, it's astounding to me that that movie was shot in 25 days. I mean, I think that's a, that's, that's pretty incredible. Uh, you know, having directed myself, and unfortunately, having directed myself, I, 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 no, I'm a big one for the shorter the shoot, uh, the more efficient you can make something, you know, the less, the, you don't always need the money that you think you need. And I'll tell you that production, when you say it's 25 days, I'm, that's amazing. Yeah. I mean, look, could I be wrong? Could it be 30 potentially, but certainly yeah, but it's still, it's still, days. and maybe, you know, that lends itself to, you know, um, some of those decisions being a bit more practical about trying to play stuff in one, you know, other oh, yeah. experience of, of trying to do a wonder, think it'll save time and it takes, you know, the whole day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But if you have an accomplished director and a director who has a, a, a clear aesthetic in a sense, a, a clear vision, then, and you have a person also from the theater who understands how to sh move people, shape space, uh that can that can really help facilitate just shooting something in one and making it really work beautifully very quickly um it's really a gorgeous uh it's a gorgeous piece and you're you're as usual you're wonderful in it jamie i really i mean you're you know i don't i don't even know what to say i maybe i'll just talk there's a minute i'm looking at the clock now uh, it's i'm just going to talk about you compliment you for the one minute and 30 seconds. Jesus, you're going to have to go slow. No, and I, I thought your accent was perfect. <laughs> the relief of that. Yeah. The relief yeah. Of that. yeah. I know it must have been hard, but it was spot on as far as I could tell. Yeah. Um, but no, seriously, is there any, is there anything else that you, that I haven't asked you that you want to, I hate when people ask this question. Why am I asking it? No, uh, it's a stupid question. Um, yeah. No. <laughs> yeah, you know what? Can I talk about this about myself? Yes, please go ahead. Yes, yeah, go ahead. Um, what what kind of, what films of mine do you like? No, I'm kidding. What the? But the thing that no, the thing that I love about the movie is that first of all, as I said, the actors are wonderful. The sense of ensemble is wonderful, but also what it you know it shows us something because you know. A lot of Americans don't know that that story, uh, and I think also the way the choice to compose it that way, to have it in black and white, um, is is really beautiful because it 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 doesn't um, overly sentimentalize it, and it it puts it it also but it puts it at a little bit of a distance for us in in a healthy way. 
which I think is good. Also, I think what is so clever and why it's so necessary to tell the story at this time, being someone from Belfast and knowing what that means and having traveled around the world a lot for the last 20 years, telling people I'm from Belfast and seeing a real variety of reactions when you tell people. Yeah, I bet, yeah. It's often the depiction of that part of the world, the depiction of Belfast, the depiction of the north of Ireland in film has been um, a, one of great violence and um, uh, very political, uh, sectarian, paramilitary style um, lens. And I, that has its place. And what Jim Sheridan did with In the Name of the Father, what Jan Demans did with 71, what Steve McQueen did with Hunger, they all have their place and they're all brilliant movies. But to see it through the eyes of a nine-year-old boy, an innocent boy, and a normal, hard-working family who didn't ask for it, who got caught up in the middle of this thing, that's really important for people from where I'm from to, to, to sell that story and to tell that story because that's the reality for most people. And most people just, they didn't go seeking it out. They weren't politically driven. They weren't, they weren't in sides. They weren't going, well, that, you know, that, that side or the bad guys, that side. Or, that just wasn't the case for so many people in Belfast. Yeah, and that really is 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 very clear, and and you so feel for those people, and then you think, I mean, my God, if we just think about what's happening in the world, what has been happening for way too long, so many people live like this, where they really just want to raise their families, but they're basically living in under this incredible civil strife, civil wars, and and it's and it's it's seemingly endless, and it's it's devastating. No, sadly. Yeah. 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 Well, Jamie, thank you for, for talking to me. Um, it's been a real pleasure and glad we got to spend some time together via Zoom. But it really is great. It's a, Jamie, again, it's a great performance. It's a beautiful movie and, and congratulations. Thanks, Sam. Cheers, buddy. Thank you.